Welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If that told the hallelujah, you can give I say, Praise the Lord. Libration tonight. The manifestation of the power of God in your life tonight. In Jesus' name. Demolition. Every work of the devil. Every fortress the devil has built in your life, in your family, tonight, everything will crumble down. You'll come out of that dungeon. You'll come out of that imprisonment. And all the power of the enemy will be destroyed in your life, in Jesus' name. Father, we bless your name tonight. We thank you because you have given us Jesus Christ, Lord, Savior, Healer, Redeemer, and the one that comes to destroy all the works of the devil. Tonight, manifest your power in the midst of your people in Jesus' name. Accomplish again all that you have provided at Calvary for everyone. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down tonight. I want to read a story, a real story, a true story of what happened when Jesus was here. And he walked the shores of Galilee. And to read this story because it has a message for everyone. And the message it has comes with miracle. And I pray as the message comes to you today, the miracle will follow. Amen. Proclamation and then power. The story is in Mark chapter 5. And I read some selected verses. I start from verse 1. Mark chapter 5, verse 1. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. Then in verse 2, it says, And when he was come out of the sheep, immediately, they have met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Then in verse 3, it tells us, What arch is dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not what chase. Then he tells us in verse 4, that because that she had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plugged asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Let's stop there for a moment. Here was a man that had a peculiar problem, personal problem. And a problem that nobody could resolve. And it says he was so violent against himself. He was so violent against society. Eventually, he lived and dwelt in the tombs, in the cemetery. And then we're told no man of all the people that tried could tame him change him, transform him until Christ came, until he met Christ. When he met Christ, the story changed. And as you meet Christ tonight, Christ the Savior, your story will change. As you meet Christ tonight, the liberator, your story will change. Whatever had bound you, whatever had oppressed you, whatever had overpowered you, 
that you couldn't help yourself and people of power and people of knowledge could not help you and no man could make you walk straight and become normal tonight everything will be resolved look at the story of this man the way it ended look at verse 15 in verse 15 it tells us and they come to Jesus and they see him that was possessed with the devil and arch the legion sitting clothed in his right mind and they were afraid everything came to normal in your life today everything will come to normal in your soul in your spirit in your body everything will come to normal whatever you have not been able to do by yourself you couldn't tell yourself you couldn't bring yourself to walk right and think right and live right you have come to the place of solution tonight it will solve the problem in your life yeah. on that your child it will solve the problem on your husband it will solve the problem yeah. on your wife it will solve the problem yeah. on your loved ones it will solve the problem totally tonight in Jesus name yeah. great transformation through great the great liberator that's what we are talking about today great transformation through the great liberator there are three things we're looking at in a message number one remember number two repent number three realize you see god always gives us the steps one take the next step two take the next step three and you arrive at your miracle tonight I said you arrive at your miracle tonight. Yeah. Number one, remember what we were without the liberator. Before he came, before he met us, and before we connected with him, before he touched us, and before he spoke the word of victory into our lives, remember what we were without the liberator. Number two, repent of the ways and the wiles of the lost. The man was lost. He was lost from his own personality. He was lost from the society. He was lost in the tools as he wandered day and night there. And the Lord says, of the ways and the wiles of the lost, we repent, we turn, and then number three will follow, you will realize it tonight. Yeah. I said you realize it tonight. Yeah. Realize what will become after liberation. You must not forget that coming to Christ, it does something in our lives, and then there's a realization of what we become after the liberation from the lord let's look at number one number one is remember what we were without the liberator you there must be a difference before you met the liberator what was your life about before this man met the liberator how was he let me read that to you again in Mark chapter 5 verse 3 who had his dwellings among the tombs. Where he lived was among the tombs, among the dead, among the people in the dark, among the people that were not normal. That's where he had his dwelling. Where have you had your life, your dwelling, your behavior, your character, before meeting Christ. And it says, And no man could bind him. He was uncontrollable. He was incorrigible. He was unbendable. He was perishing. He was going astray. 
and people try to help and show him the way, the normal way. No, no man could help him. The teachers of the land and the wise people of the land and the directors in the land and the controllers in the land and the coaches in the land and the people that were interested, this is the way how to live and where to live, what to drink, what not to drink. No man could direct him. That was what he was before he met the liberator. What have you been? How have you been? Of the correction and of the teachers, of the training that other people have tried to give us because they said they came to this world before we came and they've gathered some experience and they have some knowledge and then in our Sunday school in the church some of our teachers and school teachers they say they say the way our preachers, our pastors, our evangelists they said they say the way and yet none of those teachers None of those trainers, none of those people that have shown us the way, none could successfully point us and make us to do what we ought to do. They said, no, not with chase. How many times daddy punished us? How many times mommy punished us? How many times teachers punished us? And it's like binding us with chains and they restricted us. You will not go to that nightclub today. You will not go to that evil place today. And you will not associate with that gang again. And they laid heavy punishment on us. Lo and behold, everything just went like nothing had happened. In our lives, before we met Christ, in our lives before you meet Christ it's like that I will do that I will go there I will drink that I will smoke that I will take those hard drugs I will do those say uh, yahoo yahoo things I will spoil my life and people that meant good and they wanted you to be a strange person and a good person a righteous person they couldn't do it, and their chains and their punishments could not do it. Look at verse 4. It says in verse 4 there, it says, Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, and neither could any man Neither could any man. They took that boy from, you know, the normal school and they sent him to a military school. They said, this one will change him. He came out of the military school. He's still as rough. He's still as bad. He's still as sinful as ever. And it is the same story with everyone. That before you meet Christ, Christ only. And Christ alone can so touch your life, can so turn around your life that you'll be a new man. And today I praise God for you that change has now come. I said that transformation has now come. Uh, let me expand the story for you. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 1. Here is what we were before we met the liberator. And you, as he quickened, who were, who were, who are dead in trespasses and sins. It's like what we're like what the dead people. Dead people don't hear, we don't hear words. Dead people don't feel, we don't feel anything. Dead people, they don't, they're not stirred up. Whatever is happening, they just remain there. Dead people don't move, we're not moving, we're not making progress. The same life, we have always lived, we live that life dead there, immovable, untouchable, and there, is, there was nothing that could change us. It, says, it tells us the reason why. It tells us in verse 2, it says in verse 2, wherein in time past, you walked according to the course of this world. You walked according to the course 
of this world. The world is crooked. You walk according to the course of this world. The, the world is cruel. And you walk according to the course of this world. The world is corrupt. And you walk according to the course of this world. That's where everybody had been. Except that the liberator will come. And thank God he comes today. I said, thank God he comes today. And he will meet you there at your point of need. And I'm telling you, great transformation will happen in your life tonight. In Jesus' name. He said, we walk according to the cause of this world. According to the praise of the power of the air, actually. You know, we thought, we were stubborn. I am stubborn. You are not stubborn. It's the power of the air. The, you are not controlling your life. Your life is not in your hand. The power of the enemy, the God of this world, is the one that is pushing you here, pushing you there. And it says, it drives you there. It drives you there. And when normal people talk to you, and they say, this is the way to go, you think you are the one having the boldness and the courage. I say, no, I will not do that. You are not the one. It is the power of the priest of the air, but that power will be broken tonight. That authority in your life that doesn't allow you to walk normal like everybody walks normal, and that evil power, evil spirit controls your life. And you need to look at this. It says, The spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. <laughs> some, some people they say, You know, I disobey everybody, I disobey police, I disobey government. I disobey teachers. I disobey everybody. I disobey my parents. I disobey my benefactors. And none of them could get obedience from me. It's not you. It's the power that walketh in the children of disobedience. And that disobedience will be cured tonight. I see you now, you come to Jesus, and Jesus comes to you, and he is the liberator, and that power, and that spirit of evil, and that spirit of disobedience, and that spirit of sinfulness, and that spirit that says, I will not listen. I don't hear anything from anybody. I make up my mind. That's the way I'm going to go, and what I say I will do, I do. It's not you. It's the power above you that controls you. And you couldn't shake yourself away from that power. But Christ, I said Christ, the one that has authority and that has power in heaven and on earth, he has come. Our liberator has come. Our savior has come. Our redeemer has come. He will deliver you tonight. He will save you tonight. He will tell the devil, stop. He doesn't belong to you anymore. He belongs to me. And the control of your life will be in the hand of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hey, look at this. Look at verse 3 here. Verse 3 says in verse 3, Among whom also we all... We all, we all had a conversation in times past in the lost of the flesh. In the lost of the flesh. I hear somebody bragging and saying, you know, I'm a man and any woman I want to get and I want to make her do what I want for the pleasure of the flesh. He said, I'm a master at that. I catch them, I have the word. It's not you. It is the spirit, the spirit of lust in you that gets you to do that. They're not surrendering to you. They're surrendering to that spirit. And that spirit is ruining your life and destroying your life. But today, I said today, I said today, all that power, of the lust of the flesh will be taken out of your life. It says we were fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind 
and we were by nature the children of wrath even as others like that man i read the story to you in mark chapter 5 the spirit controlled him he thought it was so powerful it wasn't his power he thought i can break any chain i can break any bounds and i can do the forbidding thing it wasn't him it was the spirit and in the life of everyone the people who say i go beyond every bound i go beyond every territory and no matter what the word of god says and those who are teaching me what they say this is what i do is not you but that power that controls your life tonight you're free. Yeah. I said tonight you are free. Yeah. Uh, look at First Corinthians chapter six. I'm reading from verse nine. First Corinthians chapter nine, chapter six, verse nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Hold on. We've been talking about this Satan and this devil and this evil power controlling men's life, women's lives. It controls the adult. It controls the aged. If he wants to control anybody, the people that are very near the grave and he knows that they will soon pass over, he wants to control them to the end of their lives so that they will not get to the kingdom of God. But why? Because this Satan, he was actually a created angel. And it was an archangel. It was called Lucifer. It was called the morning star. Its place was in heaven. Then he rebelled in heaven. And God said, he will not live in heaven again. He will be in hell forever and ever. And knowing that he was doomed. And then all the angels that followed him, they were doomed. He said, he will not go to hell alone. Therefore, that's why he now controls men and women, boys and girls, and he makes them to do all those unrighteous things, and he closes their eyes to the way of salvation. He is not getting to the kingdom of God, and he says he's looking for candidates, a campaigning, to take candidates away from him. He will not take me with him. He will not take me with him. Yeah. And when he comes with his streak and he says, do this, I know his purpose. He wants you to do that so that he can have a claim on you and say, he is mine. You will come out of his hand today. Yeah. Look at what it says there. It says, be not deceived, neither fornicators, neither idolaters, Neither adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. And then in verse 10, it says, No thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. He said, Watch the devil uses when you want to catch a monkey. If you've caught monkeys before, Monkeys like ground nuts and they like banana. And when you put that ground nut or the banana inside a glass bottle, when you make your hand to go in, it will go in easily. But when you now take some ground nuts or you take some banana and you make your hand hold that thing, your hand cannot come out of that bottle. And the monkey will drop that thing and remove his hand. His hand will come out. Then he says, no, how can monkey see banana and ground nut? <laughs> Let it go like that. He'll put his hand again. When he's holding that thing, he cannot, his hands can not come out and then he'll be doing that and doing that and looking at the banana he will not look here look here look there until the hunter will come and the hunter will catch him that's the devil that's what he does as you're holding that thing how can somebody see adultery and just see and let it go like that how can somebody see fornication and let it go like that how can somebody see, steal, see stealing and allow it to go like that and while you're holding that thing 
the hunter is name is Satan. He comes to catch you. Today you are free. I said today you are free. Hey, look at verse 11. Verse 11 says, And such were some of you. And such were some of you. And you were just staying there and doing those things until the hunter, the devil, will catch you. I have exposed the devil to you today. He will not catch you again. He will not catch you with fornication. It will not catch you with adultery. It will not catch you with idol worship. It will not catch you with the loss of the flesh anymore in Jesus' name. I am free. Where are you? I am free. I pray you'll be free, completely free tonight in Jesus' name. Look at point number two now. Point number two. Number one is remember. Remember what we were. Number two is repent of the ways and the wiles of the lost. We're looking at Mark chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 6. Mark chapter 5 verse 6. And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. The day you see Jesus that the day the change will come. And tonight, we we'll see Jesus. Tonight, we we'll see the Savior. Tonight, we we'll see the Deliverer. Tonight, we we'll see the Healer. And then, the man who had been at the, at, in the, in the tombs, and he had been settled there, he had everything there, bed, mattress, everything there. Then he saw Jesus, great. He got up, you will get up. He ran away from the tomb. You will run away from your past in Jesus' name. And he worshipped him. And he worshipped him. That's a sign of surrender. It's like saying, he didn't know the words to say. He didn't have, he, didn't, he has not studied all those words in the dictionary about repentance, about turning, but he demonstrated it. He said, I've been a slave of the old man, of Satan, of the devil, of his evil spirits, but now I come and worship and surrender myself unto you. You will surrender that your day and then the Lord said come out and those evil spirits the Lord said how many are you what's your name and he said legion for we are many we are many there is one controlling him uh, to do evil controlling him to disobey controlling to rebel another will controlling to do this and that but all those many devils uh, that uh, you know they're telling us in your life and they are making you to go here and there all of them uh, they are this lord today in jesus name uh, look at the way the prophet puts it in Isaiah chapter 55, reading from verse 6. Isaiah chapter 55, reading from verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. The man at the tomb, he knew this is my chance. This is my chance. Christ just went over the stormy sea and came to the other side. And the man saw Jesus and he said, this is Savior. This is salvation. This is deliverer. This is deliverance. And this is the one that came to set me free, to liberate me. And immediately seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. The man saw that Jesus was near. And I want to tell you tonight, Jesus is near. He's near you there. The Savior is near, is near you there. The Deliverer is near, is near you there. Praise the Lord, this is your day. Yeah. I said, this is your day. Yeah. Look at verse 7. Verse 7 says, and let the wicked forsake his way. And the righteous man is thoughts. And let him return, that's the repentance, let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him that man we are talking about when he came like that the Lord urged mercy on him 
mercy for you today. Amen. Forgiveness for you today. Amen. Salvation for you today. Amen. Transformation for you today. Amen. He will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. He will abundantly pardon. That's what abundantly means. Whatever you have done. However far you have gone. The mercy of God. The pardon of God. The forgiveness of God. Is wider than your sin. Is greater than your sin. And the Lord will bundle everything together. And throw all your sins into the sea of God's forgetfulness. Somebody will shout amen there. Acts chapter 17 verse 30. Acts chapter 17 verse 30. And the times of this ignorance God went out. Look at that man. The time is staged in the tomb. The time is taught going to school. The time is taught obeying anyone except the devil. And the time he became uncontrollable. All that time Jesus washed away. All the times of your sinfulness of the past tonight, Jesus will wash everything away. All the time of disregarding the almighty God who has created you tonight, Jesus will wash everything away. He knew you were ignorant. You didn't know. You didn't know it was Lucifer, Satan, devil controlling your life. You were ignorant. You didn't know as he was hurting himself that his life is in the blood. And as he loses the blood, he was losing life. He didn't know. He didn't know that living in the tombs, in the tombs, there's no security. There's no protection. His life was in danger. He didn't know. Just like you didn't know when you were smoking that thing, when you are drinking that thing, when you are going into that immorality that will bring HIV, AIDS in your life. You didn't know you were ignorant. But God said... If you come today, if you turn around today, if you have Christ today, it will overlook all the years of sinfulness in your life. It will do it in Jesus' name. And the times of this ignorance, God wins that. But now, you cannot say you're ignorant now. Now, now that you have known, now that you have heard, and now that you know that Jesus Christ came into this world and he died for you, now commandeth all men everywhere, tell me, to repent. You are repenting tonight. You are coming to the Lord tonight. And as you come, mercy will come to you. Forgiveness will come to you. Salvation will come to you. Liberation will come to you in Jesus' name. Look at Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 30. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 30. It says, Thus saith the Lord, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgression. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. That man, if that man did not meet Jesus, staying in the tomb, cutting himself, sleeping in the tombs, and dwelling and living with the legion that wanted to destroy his life, he would have been ruined. He would have been ruined. Why it not for this that you are hearing now that Christ, your Savior, is waiting for you? Your life breaker is waiting for you. Your deliverer is waiting for you. If you continue in all those acts that are kind of controlled and directed and instigated by the devil, you will be ruined. But thank God now that Christ has come. I said now that Christ has come, you will not be ruined again. As you come, as you say, Lord, now I know. And I know that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. I will not be ruined anymore. Say it for yourself. I will not be ruined anymore. 
What are you? Say it now. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, it says, Cast away from you all your transgressions, cast everything away, whereby ye have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? No, you will not die in sin. You will not perish in sin. The Savior, the Redeemer, who comes to redeem, he has come to you tonight. He put joy in your heart. He'll put assurance of salvation in your life, even tonight, in Jesus' name. Look at verse 32. In verse 32, it says, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies. I have no pleasure in the death of him that died. Come back to that story I was reading to you in Mark chapter 5. In Mark chapter 4, Jesus said, let us pass on to the other side. And Satan knew that once Christ passed on to the other side, this man, the slave, and the captive of the devil will be delivered. And he didn't want that. That's why he raised up his tongue in chapter 4. So that the Lord will not get to that man. But that was too late. Because Jesus said, let us pass on to the other side. And then it said, to the other side, they came. And immediately they came to the other side. That man showed up. He said, I know I am the one you came for from the other side. And here I am available for your salvation. You are the one that Christ came for. He came from heaven. And he came to this earth. And he went through crucifixion. On the third day, he rose again. It was for you. His death for you will not be in vain. His crucifixion will not be in vain. Is coming to this place at this time and getting to you in that place at this time, it will not be in vain. Yeah. Salvation must come to you. Yeah. Because I have no pleasure in the death of him that died, says the Lord God. Therefore, turn yourselves and live. You will live. I will live. As you turn tonight, you live in Jesus' name. Number one, remember what we were in the past. Number two, repent of the waste and the wiles of the lost. Number three now, realize. Somebody there will realize. Transformation, you realize. Salvation, you realize. The setting free, you realize tonight in Jesus' name. Realize what we become after liberation. You see that man, let me read it to you again. Mark chapter 5, verse 15. It says, And they come to Jesus, and they see him that was possessed with the devil possessed with the devil what does that mean when you possess a pain you use that pain and you don't allow that pain to use itself except you the possessor when you possess a house what do you do you use that house the way you want and you do not allow any other one to use that house you possess the house the devil possessed the man. He didn't allow him to use his hands the way he wanted, his mind the way he wanted, his brain the way he wanted, his eyesight the way he wanted, his strength, his energy the way he wanted. He was possessed of the devil by the devil. But now, and he had a legion. A legion, many devils, many powers controlling him. But now, closed in his right mind, and they were afraid. What were they afraid? That Christ could change that man 
ways a word instantaneously like it will do tonight. He'll speak the word of salvation to you and instantaneously you are saved tonight in Jesus' name. But look at this man. He was now closed. His outside, outward expression, appearance now changed. In his right mind, ah, right mind, a person with a right mind will not be sleeping and dwelling among the dead in the tombs. And so he never went there again. He came to his right mind and he said, I will never go to that place of darkness and that place of the dead anymore when the Lord touches you tonight and he transforms you tonight, you'll be in your right mind. I said you'll be in your right mind. And you will appear in society as a dignified gentleman, as a dignified lady, as a dignified boy, dignified son, because the power from Christ will liberate you and set you free totally tonight. Greater amen. Supernatural liberation, amen. amen. Look at Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. This is what will happen to you. Say, it will happen to me. Say, it will happen to me. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man, that's me. I said, that's me. Say it aloud, that's me. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That's you. I said that's you. You have a new behavior. You will have, you become a new man. You will have new life. The old will pass away. You'll have a new spirit. You'll have new thoughts. You'll have a new heart. You'll have a new personality. You'll walk a dignified life. And you will be a respectable person even from tonight in Jesus' name. And God will give you a new name. The past name they used to call is a robber, is a thief, is a fornicator, is an adulterer, is a waka waka person about. He doesn't stay in one place. All that name tonight, everything is gone. And then God will make you a new instrument that will build your community and build your tribe and build your nation. You will have a positive practical mark in the world in Jesus' name. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, 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 behold in your life, behold in your family, behold in your character, behold in your life, behold in your language. All things have become new. It's time for it to happen. It's time for it to happen. You will not miss your chance tonight. It is time for it to happen. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Heads bowed and eyes closed. The Lord has come to liberate you. That evil, that personality that has been driving you here, driving you there, dragging you here, pulling you down, and uh, you know, making your life like the life of a mentally deranged man, woman. The Lord has come to liberate you. All those things you've been doing uh, that the devil has been making you do and you thought you are just an independent person but it's the devil. The Lord will liberate you tonight. Liberation. 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 Yes, but an eyes closed. You want this supernatural liberation tonight. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand. 
the Lord is there now. Call upon the Lord while he's near. And you repent and turn while the opportunity is there right now. And the Lord is saying, is here tonight to deliver, to light break, to forgive and to save you. Wherever you are, is of that hand there. God bless you. God bless you. Tonight is your night of salvation. If you are raising up your hand, please stand up wherever you are. You are raising up your hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Just stand up where you are. Are, and you're telling the Lord now I realize now I see the power behind the sin that have been driving me and controlling me but now I come to surrender I come to surrender I come to yield the totality of my life unto Christ wherever you are stand up right there stand up right there you tell the Lord Lord Jesus say it Lord Jesus Say it aloud, Lord Jesus. I receive you today as my Savior. I receive you today as my light breaker. And I give myself, I give myself unreservedly unto you. I cannot change myself. I cannot light break myself. And I pray with your power, you light break me now. And all those evil things I have done, I've been driven to in the past. Lord, I turn. Have mercy on me. Pardon me abundantly. And bring a new change into my life. Transform me so that I will never be as I've always been. Lord, I believe. Thank you, Lord. I am saved. I am forgiven. I am taken out from the hands of the devil. And I come now. I become a child of God. Old things pass away now from my life, from my behavior, from my character, because Christ now lives on the inside of me and he'll make me to be in the right mind and go the right direction. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Keep on standing. I'm going to pray for you now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray everyone who has turned from the past, everyone who has turned unto you here or over the radio, over the television, on the social media, anywhere, everywhere, in the wide old world. Lord, I pray your forgiveness will come to everyone now in Jesus' name. Amen. New life. New understanding. New direction. New character. New behavior. Grant to everyone right now the grace that makes us to live in newness of life impart unto everyone thank you lord for the answer in jesus name i pray the lord has done it say i am forgiven say I am saved. Say, I am changed. The Lord has answered your prayer. Keep on standing. Our counselors will come to you there. And our pastor, state pastor, will lead us in the counseling now. I am forgiven. You are forgiven. God bless you. Feel the sleep that the counselors will give to you. 
So we'll be able to help you further to keep your faith. Fill it correctly. Your name in capital letter. And your phone number. Write it correctly. Give us the description of your address. So that we can help you better. Counselors, let's spread everywhere remember to always go towards the back far to the back towards the gate remember to go behind the children hall remember to go to the car park there are a lot of people there big crowd there at the car park please fill the forms correctly and remember Tonight is a great night that God is going to do something in your life. Your mountains are going to roll away. Amen. So be talking to God as you are seated or standing. Tell the Lord that tonight I must give my testimony. People have been giving testimonies. Tonight is your own turn. You are online. Please connect with Jesus by clicking the, the link online and fill the form. Fill the form online and submit. Those who are listening over the radio or television, you also use the number on the screen to send us SMS or WhatsApp message with your name and your address we will reach out to you. Please, counselors, ensure that correct information is given to you. And as they give you the information, go through it, and you are certain that everything is correct before you hand it over to your supervisor in your segment there. Let counselors who have, who have finished from their own cluster or segment, move to another place. In the children's church, back of the children's church, where the languages are, please get there. It appears nothing is happening there. Please get to that place. And you can see many hands are up there waiting for forms. You see it over the camera there. So please, let counselors go there. All workers, please join as usual so that this counseling session will be hastened. Keep on praying and talking to God because this is another night. A night to be remembered. A night that God will supernaturally touch you. A night that you will share your testimony. Hold on to God. Remember, this is the second to the last night of this crusade, and you cannot go back without your miracle. And very soon, the man of God will come up to declare the word of authority that we roll away every mountain in your life. Counselors, let's be fast about it. As you are filling the forms, check through to make sure that correct information is given. Those who cannot write, help them to write. And those who can write, as they write, you check through it. When you finish, remain standing there because you are going to bring out those that God will touch tonight. Did you hear that testimony that we had before the message? The sister that gave the testimony that bones began to rearrange and she started hearing the noise of the bones coming together until every bone joined and she rushed for an x-ray 
and you saw the x-ray practically being shown unto all by the medical doctor. Tonight is your own night. Practically something will happen in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Have an expectation that God will do it for you. Counselors, when you are through, you wave your hand at me here. You are through from your segment. Please wave your hand so that we will know that you are through. Those who are through from the frontier, please get to the back. Don't forget the language section and don't leave out anyone. They are passionate, you see them, even before, as they are waiting for you to reach them, their hands are still up. So ensure that you reach out to every one of them. What is happening now is the greatest miracle that can happen to a human being. Heaven is rejoicing. The angels are rejoicing. The saints of God are rejoicing. That names have been written in the book of life. Be preparing your mind, your heart. Prepare yourself for a great touch of God tonight. The Lord is about to liberate you from every hand of the devil. The chains are going to be loosed. The yokes are going to be broken. Your bodies are about to be rolled away. Those mountains are going to be crushed. Pray with expectation. I told you, whatever you are asked to do, do. Begin to walk when you are asked to walk. Pray. Those who are counseling, please let's be very fast and when you are done wave your hand at me there are some hands up if you look at the screen there are hands up there and that side is towards the children's church please counselors God bless you. Those who have finished, move to that area behind the children's church. Ensure you pick everyone. And our language interpreters, Ensure that all the people in your section, they are, they, are, they are attended to. If you are listening over the television, over the radio, please look at the screen. Click the link or use the number on the screen to give us SMS or WhatsApp message and put your address there and your phone number. The number is plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. I pick it again plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three counselors if you are done wave your hand wave your hand at me so that we can see those are the front here they are done towards the middle if you are done can you wave your hand towards the children's church if you are done please wave your hand and towards my left hand side behind the choir. If you are done there, wave your hand also. And far, far towards my left hand side up there. If you are done also, wave your hand. Be preparing yourself now. Very soon, the rain will begin to fall. 
very soon you will hear shout of miracles everywhere in the hall here in the tent in the in the ground on the ground here very soon you will see people jumping up very soon you will see mountains rolling away remember today is the second to the last day of this crusade what mountain have you brought you will not go back with them and i want you now to rise up on your feet and let us welcome the servant of god to release the miracles upon our lives praise the lord miracle coming to you there liberation coming to you there every sickness and disease will be rolled away from your life tonight yeah. and every mountain will move away yeah. when you hear the final amen you check up yourself open your eyes if you are blind you will see yeah. the dumb will hear and speak yeah. the lame will rise up and walk yeah. and any internal problem everything will be cleared away yeah. You raise up one hand and you lay the other hand on yourself and remember when we mentioned the name of jesus that thing uh, must go away from there yeah. are you ready yeah. lay the other hand on yourself father in jesus name yeah. i bring everyone over here everyone in all the locations everywhere all over the world i bring them before you now like break everyone in jesus name any evil personality evil spirit evil power the devil any demon to mention any life i command come out in jesus name Spirit of insanity, I command you there. You cannot remain there when you hear the name of Jesus. Come out in Jesus' name. Every swelling in your body, goiter, hunchback, hernia, elephantiasis, or the swelling of cancer, I command be healed in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes, Jesus is touching your eyes now. Receive your sight. Receive your sight. Confirm the opening of their eyes in Jesus' name. Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out. Lord, I pray they will hear. And they will begin to speak clearly in Jesus' name. Yeah. And those who have had accidents, your bones were broken, any part of the body, I pray that the hand of the Lord will touch your broken bones. Yeah. Lord, mend their bones in Jesus' name. Yeah. I pray for those who have arthritis or those who are laid paralyzed in any way. I pray power from heaven, like breaking power from heaven, will touch all those uh, withered parts of the body and paralyzed parts. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Kyle, you are healed in Jesus' name. Also, you are healed in Jesus' name. And cancer, you are healed in Jesus' name. Any condition of your body that is uh, that makes you to know you are sick, you are you have uh, any disease, the hand of the Lord touch you right now. Amen. Be healed, Amen. be made whole. And what you are not able to do before, you will do in the strength of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, everywhere now, right, front, left far away in all those halls in the language section radio television social media touch everyone like great everyone set everyone free 
confirm it now in every life. In Jesus' name I pray. You have got it. You have got it. Now you have a testimony. You have got it.